Nigeria is a nation of 170 or thereabout people, and our farmers depend on mixed cropping, and there's very little of monoculture in the country. We have very little of industrial agriculture anywhere in the country. Uh, but there's been a major push of late to Monsanto to not only introduce monoculture but to take over the dominant staple crops in the country. There's been a lot of experimentation going on and happily there's been a lot of failures also. There's been the, the, the work in the background with some government agencies which rather than regulate biosafety are actually promoting biosafety. Uh, they are rather promoting biotechnology, modern biotechnology. So we have biotech organizations regulating biotechnology in Nigeria, uh, which, which means that the system we have is not really any system to regulate anything but to open up the environment. And if Nigeria is overtaken by Monsanto, then we can be sure that they've got Africa uh, where they want her. And, and so the, the application, and Monsanto made application for genetically modified corn, two events, and BT Cotton, the, the type, exact type that failed in Burkina Faso to introduce into Nigeria in October. They applied in October 2015, last year. By February this year, the agency that ought to regulate our technology advertised that they've got these applications. And uh, then some of us quickly got together, examined the applications, and sent enough reasons to debunk and nullify the very poorly packaged applications, which were copies of applications they had made somewhere else, more or less. They were nothing to do with the, this context of Nigeria. Now, on the 28th of April, 2016, my organization received a letter from the regulatory agency acknowledging that they've got our protest and our objections to the application for Monsanto, and they assured us that they would consider our objections. Two days later, two days later, they issued approval to Monsanto. At least two days later, because there was only, actually only one working day after they wrote to us, because they issued the, the approval to Monsanto on Sunday, 1st of May 2016. And so it became very clear that whatever objection we submitted we had nothing at all to do with what they were going to do. And so we're taking this forward. Right now, our lawyers are studying the books. And we are, by the time we had a, a major job of safety conference in earlier, earlier May, if I didn't get to know about this approval until we stumbled upon it on the Bausetti Clearinghouse website. And so the approval was given secretly, and Nigerians were not meant to know about it. And now the government is in, in panic mode and convened a Bausetti, a Bautechnology Experts meeting to advise on what to do. And of course, we managed to get ourselves into the Experts meeting. Are we not experts? Yeah. Are we not experts? Yeah. I mean, we know the seeds, we know the food, and we know what is right and what is wrong. And so we are experts. So we're right there. And first of all, we took the law that was signed by our former president a few days before he left office. We took the law apart and showed that that law is incapable of protecting the Nigerian environment. And it's not an accident. Because even if you look at other kinds of environmental pollution, pollution is never an accident. Pollution can be deliberate, especially when it's targeted at vulnerable communities or vulnerable sections of even rich cities. Now, somebody in the World Bank in 2009 wrote, wrote a memo saying that Africa is underpolluted, and so it's okay to pollute Africa. <laughs> you know that story? He said also that for people who would die before the age of 65, the problem of getting prostate cancer or whatever does not arise at all. So keep them 